If you've ever looked at improving your thermos or getting better overclocking headroom in your system, you've probably considered changing your thermal paste. Now, while replacing the normal thermal paste on your laptop or system with something like maybe Thermo Grizzlies, Cryonaut or the Noctua NTH1 will get you some really good performance gains if you've ever thought about wanting to take things even further, maybe to the extreme even, then you've probably heard of going liquid metal instead. Now, normally when people do this, they use Thermo Grizzlies Cryonaut sorry, conduct or not, and the process can be rather daunting and dangerous to your machine if you're not careful, but based on the results of some others, the gains that you can get from it can be astronomical, even up to 20 degrees Celsius in some cases. Now, using liquid metal is exciting and challenging enough, but me being me and me being experimental, I went online and looked for liquid metal thermal interfaces on Chinese e-commerce site Taobao and landed me here with this, the Osborne liquid metal thermal interface. Gosh, that is a bloody mouthful. And they're even claiming a thermal conductivity of 128 watts per meter Kelvin. That is 55 higher than the 73 of the Thermal Grizzly conductor knot. And that sounds great, but honestly, I can tell you right now that I am a terrible mix of excited cautious and curious because if anything goes wrong, I will basically lose a computer. And I mean, I will do whatever I can to minimize those risks, but it is still scary. Still, I do it for the science, the entertainment, and for the curiosity and the what ifs. And you guys get to join alongside me for the ride. So yeah, let's see if this Osborne liquid metal makes or breaks my system. Now, I did mention that I am a bit scared and wary of using an untested liquid metal, so I won't actually be using it on my main system or laptop to start off with, but rather a laptop that I have lying around that is basically pretty old, but still gets pretty hot, the Dell XPS L502X. This system has trouble cooling the NVIDIA GeForce GT 540M GPU and the Intel Core i7-2630QM 32nm CPU all together, so I'm definitely excited to see what the effects are of liquid metal in this system. As you can see, it's even been repaired before because it has a cracked display, but rather than going out and buying a new one, I fixed it up with a 14-inch display that I had lying around. Uh, so yeah, you're looking at a 14-inch, well... LCD panel on a 15 inch laptop. If it works, it works, right? <laughs> uh, we'll start off first by tearing the system apart and getting into the CPU, heat pipes, and fans. So I've actually repasted this system before with some GD900, which is a pretty good price to performance thermal paste. Uh, let me know if you guys would be interested to see a review on this. I start off first by cleaning off the old thermal paste and I'm just using some isopropyl alcohol, uh, some wipes and an old toothbrush to do this. Now I've seen people run into situations where they spray liquid metal all over their board from their first press, so instead of applying this on the CPU and GPU first, to be safe, I will be putting it on the heatsink side first, making sure that there's not too much and that there's a thin enough application because of course I wouldn't want to run into any situation in which I put too much and it starts leaking all over the board. After that's done, I move on to doing the same thing on the CPU and the GPU. Pretty easy so far and now I just reassemble the whole thing back once more and check out if I killed the system. <laughs> well, it starts perfectly fine, so that's a good start. So let's run some benchmark numbers to compare the befores and afters. In order to compare it, I have of course taken some benchmark numbers with the GD900 running the Blender BMW benchmark test. Now that it has liquid metal, I ran the same benchmark again and the results? Uh, well, you can see that the liquid metal really did help out with the thermos of the laptop. Temperatures dropped a massive 6 Celsius versus the regular GD900 thermal paste and while I feel like the results are really good, the gap could have been wider and more pronounced if on both runs the fans actually ran on high mode, but it seems like the threshold for hitting that is 71 degrees Celsius. 
The other really interesting thing is that compared to my results before the liquid metal, the benchmark actually ran faster at 50 minutes and 16 seconds versus 51 minutes and 7 seconds. So that probably meant that the system was actually boosting higher and running faster while on liquid metal, which maybe does explain the temperature gap being not as large as I expected it to be. So yeah, I accidentally gave my laptop an extra performance boost. Closing thoughts on the Osborne Liquid Metal Thermal Grease though, uh, well, it performed really well. I'm really impressed by it, uh, but it remains to be seen if you get the same kind of longevity as you do with, let's say, the Thermal Grizzly Conduct or not. A tube of this set me back 59.80 yuan, which is the equivalent of 36.56 ringgit or about $8.38 well, US dollars, for about 0.2 milliliters or about 2.1 grams. This does make it cheaper and have more volume than the conductor knot, but of course it remains to be seen if it does perform better than it, uh, because I've actually not tested the conductor knot, so that's maybe something I'll have to do or test for another day. For now though, I am pretty happy and pleased with the Osborne Liquid Metal Tim, and so if you're looking to bring your system's performance to the next level and you see this guy around, then maybe it's not such a bad idea to give it a shot. That was pretty much the first time installing Liquid Metal into my system, and I've gotta say that it was pretty exhilarating and different, but yeah, the results ended up pretty good, so I think it was worth it. I definitely am super interested to give it a shot on my Illigare Raven SER, so stick around if you're interested to cheese to see just how much more performance I can squeeze out of that laptop as it can get rather toasty. Anyway, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a like, drop a comment down below on what you think of this liquid metal, whether you have tried it before or if maybe you're using it right now, because I'm definitely interested to know. Also make sure that you're subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified for when any of my new videos go live. My name is Yang the Tech Rodent and I might just have the itch to go liquid meadow all the things now. I'll see you guys around.